Once the Docker environment is set up and enabled on your server, we are ready to launch the new web access image. There are actually two parts to the process and it can seem a bit confusing, so I want to explain what we need to do and then I'll walk you through actually doing it. For both parts of the process, we will pull down the image first, then run it. The first step creates a file that lists all of your post offices so that the web server knows how to track down mail items for your users. The first one is a one-time event, but you would need to run it a second time if you ever, say, added another post office to your system. The second part is the actual launch of the containerized software. It uses the whitelist created in step one, as well as a number of other command line arguments to connect to your groupwise system and also spins up the web server to handle the browser connections that will come from your users. Here are the commands for step one. The first part is pretty easy and straightforward. It's just a command to pull down the utility image. And here is the command line to launch that utility to create the whitelist. Yes, I agree, it is long and complex. The bolded parts represent information specific to your system that will need to be supplied. Trust me, it needs to be exact. The basics of this command are to specify where we want to put the whitelist file it creates. We then specify the credentials of the GroupWise super user, and we tell it where that post office agent is along with the SOAP port. The last part of the command is actually calling the POA list image that we just pulled from Docker. And here are the commands for the second part. The pull command is again pretty simple, just a docker pull for webac-ng. Now webac-ng is the current name of the image on docker. I expect that to change at some point in the future, but for now, that's what we are using. We have similar kinds of parameters to supply here. The location of the whitelist file created in step one. The name parameter can be anything you want. I will show you where that shows up in just a minute. We also declare the DNS name of this host server, and we tell the service where to find your DNS server. Uh, the dash P allows you to redirect ports if needed. And finally, the name of the image we pulled down. One final note here, the latest tag on the end of the line tells it to check if there is a newer image on Docker Hub. If there is a newer image, it will pull it down and install it on the fly. Before I move over to my server, I wanted to give you a quick heads up on how I do things. To keep things organized, I like to create a folder underneath my root folder and I name it GWWeb. This becomes my location for storing the whitelist and if I were to set up certificates, this is where I'd store them, you know, the .crt and the .key file. I won't be using certificates in this demonstration, but the documentation shows you how to include them if you wish. Okay, here I am in a terminal window on my SLES 12 server. I'll change to my GW web folder and do a listing. Here you see that commands file I mentioned. Let me open it up and show you what I have put in it. I have two sections here. On top, the two commands to pull and run the whitelist utility, and down here, the two commands to pull and run the actual web access code. As you can see, I've already filled in the parts of the commands that are specific to my system. The path I want my whitelist in, my credentials and IP addresses, etc. Now all I have to do is copy and paste these commands back into my terminal window in order to execute them. I'm going to start with the first pull command and let it run. It takes a moment or two and the first time you run it, you'll see it download and extract. Since I've already run it, I simply see confirmation that I'm indeed running the latest image. Once it's complete, I'll do the same thing with the actual command and let it run. And since this is reaching out and contacting my GroupWise admin server, I will need to supply my super user password so that it has permission to pull that data. I should now have that whitelist file in my folder. If I do a listing, then I can see it was indeed successful and there is my poa.whitelist file. Now we move on to pulling down the next image, copy and paste the pull command and execute it. And when done, we are finally ready to fire up the new code. To do that, it's just one more copy and paste and enter. So here I am back at the prompt. How do we know if things are working? There are a couple of things to check. The first is to run a docker ps command. 
This command will list out any and all Docker processes. And here you can see that GWWeb is running. This is the name I gave it in the command. The reason you want to name it is so that you can shut it down. To do that, you want to enter Docker, stop, and that name, GWWeb, then hit enter. Another test you can run is to make sure the port is in listen mode. With the netstat command, I can grep for port 80. I should see port 80 in a listen mode, and there it is. At this point, you are ready to log in as a GroupWise user and read your mail. Thanks for watching. We hope you find this information helpful. Thank you.